I've been trying to make this movie for a long time, more than 15 years, and um, it was always about immigration. But the fact that it's coming out now, and I certainly changed the script after Trump came into office and you know all of these anti-immigrant policies were coming forward, I leaned more heavily into the immigration story. And um, I think the fact that we're coming out on Filipino History Month, American History Month, the fact that we're coming out during the month leading up to an election, the fact that it's finally coming out at all, um, and the fact that the anti-immigrant sentiment has never been worse, and, and now we have an added layer of anti-Asian sentiment. So for all of those reasons, um, although it took me a lot of blood, sweat, and tears to get here, this is the right time for this movie. And I think beyond all of that, it's that kind of movie that I think you go to the movie theater for, and it has a cathartic feeling and opens your eyes if you don't know what this immigrant experience is like but fills your heart with hope and music and all of those things that make a theatrical experience magical. And I, I was shooting for that. I hope I got there, but it was certainly that kind of movie that I wanted to make. We shot most of the film primarily on two lenses, a 50 and a 75 Kawa anamorphic uh, vintage lenses. So the, when you shoot with anamorphic and you come up close, you see everything, but you're right there. And that was something that I wanted to in part, because it's a story of a Filipino girl who wants to be a country singer, I wanted it to give a very authentic portrayal, to not be cartoonish. And everything was handheld. You feel the breathing of this character of the camera that's constantly throughout the film. You feel the urgency of any moment, somebody coming in the door, not knowing where your next home is gonna be. And that sense of immediacy is the migrant experience. And I wanted to sort of portray that um, and, you know, I have to hats off to my cinematographer, August Thurmer, who handheld almost every shot in the film. Um, that was a character, the breathing, you know, th there's something when you feel the breathing of the camera that actually makes you um, look at a story a little bit differently. So that was all intentional. And the other thing that was stylistically, we um, shot kind of as a tip of the hat to John Ford. A lot of shots going up, like he used to shoot John Wayne into the sky. A lot of sky shots. Um, and, and again, that was the reason we used like 1970s vintage lenses. I wanted it to have a sort of timeless kind of feeling, uh, an old timey feeling at the same time, the events around her are so present. And so what's happening in the world today. So it was a combination of trying to create a nostalgic feeling whilst being very immediate. I wanted that last scene to almost feel dreamlike. So there's colors that we introduce in that scene that are not anywhere in the in prior to that film. The gold, the red, this sort of um, magical thing of getting on stage fully realized as this young woman. Um, and you know, I want to stress it's not a fairy tale ending. You know, I won't spoil it, but it's not like she's won the lottery and she didn't get a record deal. She's you know, it's not a happy ending, but it's a hopeful ending. I hope. There has been some Twitterverse about White Savior. I think people probably haven't seen the film, but um, you know that was very important to me that we don't do that. And that by the end of the film, she is it's her own agency that drives her to the end of the film. Not all of these wonderful people who do help her along the way, they're allies, but they're not saviors. There's a big, big difference. For me as a filmmaker, Almost the number one thing I look for in my own work, but also seek out in others is intention. It's what is your intention as you make this piece of art? And you can kind of tell when the intention is a kind of self-reflexive thing, when people are showing off and being like, look at me, the great filmmaker. My intention for this movie was for the audience. I wanted to make a film that my Lola and my Lola and my Titus would like, but also that would play uh, to uh, cinephiles, which is the other side of my life. And it's a hard thing to try to create something for both of those audiences, um, very difficult. And I, but I, my intention was to create something for both. Um, and I think you have to think about that as you find your voice is what is it that you want to say about the world and how do you want to say it? And that comes about in so many different ways. For me, I come from documentary background. Um, but I care very much about aesthetics. And um, I think the documentary side of myself is very much reflected in the film. We shot all in mostly real locations. I shot Dale Watson as himself. Um, I was finding the magic as, I, as we went along. So a lot of it's extemporaneous. Um, 
Uh, but at the same time, um, I wanted to tell a sweet story, uh, a country story, um, three chords and the truth. And so um, to make it just simple and, and authentic was my goal. I hope it, it was successful in that. <laughs>